Hey guys, welcome back to Michael Claire to Arts. Today we're going to do something that we've done numerous times in the past, and that is to do a really quick warm up drawing. So, those of you who are not quote unquote professional artists working in the marketplace, um, you know, this is something that I actually encourage you to do as much as you can. So, drawing, drawing, drawing. They're said, you know, you create 10,000 drawings to weed out all the bad, right? You, you get rid of a lot of the bad habits, bad drawings. And you create muscle memory, which helps you in your day-to-day -day practice. So practice, practice, practice. That whole, you know, that phrase, practice makes perfect. Um, of course, there is no perfect in art. I just think that practice and drawing, uh, whether it's every day or every other day, is something that all of us can benefit from. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to do a really quick uh, portrait of Abraham Lincoln. And this helps establish some of those things that I've been working on uh, in my private illustration career, which is understanding form, understanding volume, understanding face construction, um, composition, all of these things, the principles and elements of art, you know, even if I've, the fact that I've been working in illustration now for, gosh, almost 25 years, I definitely say that doing something every single day will help you benefit you and that's exactly what we're going to do today. I've been doing a lot of reviews of products. And at the end of the day, this channel is really about drawing. So I'm here at my desk on my, uh, on my Mac. And I'm going to be working in Photoshop today. And it's something that I pretty much do all the time, right? I sit at my desk and I draw something all the time. You know, whether it's uh, for money, because that is my... Uh, my vocation. We are having like super cold weather. I don't know if you guys are as well. And uh, we've got the heat on, which causes a little bit of irritation. So if you hear me clear my throat, I'll do my best to edit those out. I know they're an aggravation. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay. So basically what I like to do is break the page down into thirds. Right? I do this mentally. I don't do it physically. So you're not going to see me draw something that shows these boxes, right? I don't typically do that. I do this, obviously, for your benefit. And I don't want to place something right in the center because that kind of deadens everything. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of position it just to the right of the center. So here being the center. So let's go ahead and get rid of those little square doodads. Um, and, you know, just gives it a little bit better of a dynamic uh, presence, better composition, right? Dynamic presence. What am I, a philosopher? No, it, it helps the composition, right? You don't want to deaden things out. So I talked about those elements and the principles of art, right? In my, in my little intro there. The thing is, is you don't ever, I don't want to say you don't ever master those things because obviously there are a lot of artists out there that have mastered these things. But me, I'm constantly reconfirming and reaffirming these things in my personal illustration career. Because let's be honest, I, I you know, drawing to me is hard. It's always been hard. Um, I know it doesn't look like it, but, you know, I, I do struggle. I struggle quite a bit. I struggle quite a bit with fatigue, with other people's opinions. That's something that, you know, as a professional, we all have to deal with. Because basically, if you're doing this for money... You know, unless you're doing this as something to market yourself, then you're going to be kind of subjugated to somebody else's opinion about your work. And especially if you're selling things, um, you know, selling things, meaning selling your work for money. Uh, and that's kind of, I've heard a lot of people, uh, especially students that are really apt to just get into a studio environment and just kind of, you know, if I make it to the studio environment, everything's going to be fantastic. But then, you know, the reality sets in the studio environment a lot of times isn't everything what people think it is. And that's something that I learned, you know, working at Disney, working uh, at a studio in Orlando. And uh, that studio environment is really good in some respects. But in other respects, you're basically selling your time and you are a tool. <laughs> you're a tool. <laughs> um, so that's just something that, uh, you know, you have to. Uh, balance, especially whenever you start working as a freelancer, because that's what I do full time now. I am a freelance contract illustrator, uh, concept designer. I also do uh, 3D work. So I do 3D work for toys, collectibles, statues, um, 
and basically anything that involves a 3D model. So that's kind of where I'm at right now in my career. Is it hard? Yeah, <laughs> it's so hard. I mean, I, I every single day that I work, I'm very thankful for what I do. But on the other hand, it is challenging. And, you know, that's just something that you have to deal with. So what I'm doing right now, you saw me put in a circle, right? I put in a big circle. That's a sphere. And I don't think of it as a circle. Some people think, oh, you draw a perfect circle. No, I'm looking at the bigger picture, which is what the drawing or the image that I'm creating is, uh, first of all, what's it made of? Um, that's a big factor. Second of all, <clears throat> what is the positioning of it in 3D space? That's a, that's a big sentence, right? 3D space, how we see the world, right? It's very hard sometimes for us to visualize in our brain a three-dimensional image placed on a two-dimensional surface. It's, it's a challenge, and that communication is where a lot of times the, uh, the push and pull happens between you know, our brains and our physical bodies, and we're sitting there, we're struggling. Why can't I get that positioning right? Why can't I see that? I can see it in my brain, but getting it to translate down to my hand, that's a challenge. So having this sphere in place basically helps me kind of root things and give a roadmap. That roadmap is what I'm positioning it right now. And, excuse me, and basically the roadmap, that year is in the wrong place, is going to help me gain access to what I want, which is a cohesive, believable illustration. So, in the three-quarter view, uh, first of all, Abraham Lincoln. He's controversial, did a lot of things right, did a lot of things kind of questionable too. Um, you know, a lot of people think he's the, the grandest and greatest president that ever lived. But since I didn't live at that time, the only thing that I can rely upon are history books that are written by other people. So I think at the end of the day, he was definitely one of our presidents and he did a lot of really great things to help push forward certain aspects of uh, equality and humanity in our country. And those things are good. Um, I do know that he had some physical ailments that I was not aware of. I think he had, uh, he had some type of a disease that caused him to be very gaunt. And gaunt being, you know, very, you know, thin like that. And he was a tall man. I believe he was definitely over six feet. He might have been like six, five or six, six. And, you know, of course, with his four foot hat, he was probably 10 feet tall. <laughs> um, but he definitely was a controversial uh, president, to be sure, especially during our time in this country uh, known as the Civil War. Um, that was kind of a dark time in our country. And, you know, I wonder what he would think whenever he sees the country now. Uh, anyway, I digress. So we're thinking, we're talking about art. We're not talking about politics. We're not talking about any of that. <clears throat> so art. So when you draw something like this, I talked about that sphere and a sphere having height, width, and depth. That depth, that third element is what really messes us up because whenever we look at this, we see a circle. I see a circle, but I also see a sphere. It has height. It has uh, width, right? And then it has this third thing called depth. So that, like if I had a light short source shining on the top of it and right, and I have a shadow right here and then I cast the shadow right here, suddenly it becomes a three dimensional element, right? That's kind of what I'm going for. Now, there are artists out there that, you know, draw 2D and they make it kind of in a 3D, right? Environment, which is really cool. Um, but for this particular warm up drawing, I'm just going to do something, you know, pretty simple pretty easy, not getting too in depth. Yeah, his, his eyes were really sunken in, right? One of the things too that I'm always um, very conscious of, especially as it pertains to drawing, is understanding your reference. What is reference? Reference is something that we look at to create an image, um, that, uh, you know, we design, we want to, you know, the image to look artistic and change things about it. And a lot of times I think that, uh, you know, we get what's called, uh, 
that phrase slave to our reference. I don't like using the word slave because it has such a negative connotation to it as I mess up the eye. Um, but yeah, don't, don't be a quote unquote slave to your reference. Change the image up. Make sure it looks different from the image that you're referencing. And at the end of the day, create something unique. You know, I can't tell you how many times I've gone through the mall, right? You go through the mall back when the mall was relevant and you see these incredible graphite images that look so just, I mean, you can tell the artist spent so much time on them to create them to look like whoever they're, you know, drawing. And it looks like a photograph. And, you know, I don't have any problem with artists creating images that look like photographs. There is, there is a need for that in the market, but I think that, uh, you know, the artistic expression in me or the person that, you know, creates stuff, the artist in me wants to change things and tell a story, having just an image, a graphite image of a, of a celebrity that doesn't tell a story. It's just an image of the celebrity and it shows the technical side and the prowess of the, of the artist. And, you know, I, I, again, I think that's all well and good. I just, for me, in my opinion, I like changing things up a little bit. That's why I like doing like caricatures and stuff because it, it, it changes the dynamic. I'm going to make this a little bit taller. It changes the dynamic and the presence of the story of what you're trying, you know, trying to accomplish. And it's, you know, kind of livens things up a little bit. So a lot of people ask me, what brush are you using? What brush? Oh my gosh, the brush is awesome. So this particular brush is part of a collection of brushes that I've had for a long time. If you look over here on the left-hand side, I've got a myriad of brushes. I probably have over a thousand brushes loaded into my Photoshop and I probably use like five. <laughs> I'm terribly, I'm terribly ridiculous like that, right? You know, you spend X amount of dollars and you know, you just, you, you just don't use them. I don't use them. I use like five brushes, except whenever I'm doing specialty work. Like if I have to do, you know, like foliage or something like that, or if I create a stamp or, you know, just ridiculous stuff that, that, uh, you know, me as an illustrator has done in the past. And, uh, I just, I, you know, this particular brush is part of a set and you can go to creatureartteacher.com, sign up for the newsletter. Um, and I believe you get this brush for free. He may have stopped that. The guy who runs the site, Aaron Blaze, he's an ex Disney animator and director. And this particular brush, I just love it. It's got good texture. It's got good form. Um, it doesn't bog the system down too much because you can get brushes that bog the system down. And I just think that, uh, you know, overall, this is a really great brush to create, uh, artwork with. So let's go ahead and get things ironed out a little bit more. I keep talking and I keep messing up my drawing. <clears throat> okay, so for those of you who are struggling with portraiture, portraiture or character design or something like that, my advice to you obviously is to draw every day. Second of all, learn the principles and elements of art. Third, you need to understand anatomy. And anatomy is, it's like that, uh, it's like a curse word almost for some artists, right? They just, I don't need anatomy. I'm, <clears throat> I know all that I need to know. And I think that's a little short-sighted. I think that we as artists can always benefit from doing better and learning more. That's why I'm constantly, you know, constantly, uh, absorbing, uh, different styles, absorbing different, um, tutorials, right? Learning how to do things. I'm a really big proponent and advocate of, of continuing learning. That's something that I've continued to do throughout my career, right? That's how I was able to learn ZBrush, uh, a little bit of Blender, and really, um, you know, now I work professionally as a digital sculptor. So those things have really helped me out. And I just think that, you know, if you're not learning something, you're, you're kind of in a stagnant moment you know, propel yourself and, and position yourself and encourage yourself basically to learn something, learn something new, whether it's every day, every other day, every week, try something new. That's what my mama always told me. <laughs> but anatomy, anatomy is very important because it, it is kind of the foundation, the inner workings of the, uh, the item that you're working on. And understanding, you know, skulls and understanding some of those other elements are important because then you can look, look at them as not only 
the foundation and the structure and the building blocks of what you're doing, but also kind of as a, uh, a tool to help direct, right? Cause I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, ocular cavity, you know, here's the bridge of the nose. Here's where the nose comes down. Right. And you have that area that is all cartilage. So it's kind of flexible. Then I come down here to the, to the uh, upper part of the, uh, of the jaw, you know, in the, whatever it's masticular. I don't know what that's called. I forget. I just call it the upper part of the mouth. <laughs> I'm very technical. The vestibular, blah, 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 blah. No. Um, but it, it really helps me determine where stuff is, you know, like the skull comes all the way back here. So whenever I'm looking at this, I basically have to modify this little area right here. You got the hair that comes up, you know, and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking skull. Here's where the teeth are, right? Comes down a little bit more. Here's that cheekbone, right? Here's his chin. It's going to be hidden. Here, here's his neck. It's gonna be a young Ray Blinken. Doesn't look as old. <laughs> this is in his in his teenage years, right? Maybe he's got a nose ring. Hey, Blinken with a nose ring. Sure, sure, bro. That's really funny. I'm laughing. Thumbs down. <laughs> You've insulted me. You've insulted me and my Abe Lincoln. Whoops. So for those of you who are wondering what machine I'm working on, a lot of you do, because that is kind of the, <laughs> the tell all of success, right? If you work on a black, if you work on a, an XYZ, that makes you successful. No, these are tools. And it's very important that you know that tools, right? Improve, but, and they streamline and they help, but they can also hinder. So I've, I'm, you know, I've said many times before that if a machine, let's go ahead and do this, do one shape. If a machine inhibits me from creativity, then it's, it's no longer useful to me. And I've had many a machine hinder my creativity, right? From tablets to desktops. I mean, you name it. It's just been, oh, Sometimes, man, whenever I work on, you know, work, work on illustrations, especially when I'm traveling, right? Like a traveling machine. I haven't had success with travel machines because I just, I have a very uh, specific way that I work and I just haven't found a good travel machine that I've, I've really liked. The closest one that I had was an HP ZBook X2G4, which had an i7 processor. It had 4K screen, um, but it was, it was. It had some issues. I mean, it had 32 gigs of RAM, but it never really ran Photoshop that well. And it just, uh, I ended up selling it. And of course I regretted it after. Now it did have Wacom technology, which is really good. Um, but at the end of the day, I just wasn't using it. And I ended up selling it for, you know, thousand bucks. I paid 1500, so I didn't lose too much money, but it really taught me a lesson. And uh, that, uh, you know, machines are basically tools and sometimes they let you down. So, so what are we doing now? So now I've kind of got that roadmap in. I'm checking my proportions. I'm checking my placement of anatomy. I'm checking how things look and a really good indicator of whether or not things are in a good place is for me to flip it and you're going to see how bad it is. Holy moly. So now... <laughs> Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make fun of myself. Okay, so warp. So now we're going to basically fix a couple things. Because whenever you flip it, it basically kind of reveals a lot of the issues, uh, anatomically speaking, that are there. That maybe your mind's eye didn't see when it was in the other position. So let's go ahead and position this a little bit down, a little bit better. That eye right here is just in a place. So... I'm going to flip it back. Yeah, that's a little bit better. So, and two, whenever I zoom out <laughs> and I kind of, I kind of squint my eyes a little bit, that kind of makes me see things, I hate to say a little bit clearer in terms of form, in terms of placement. Now, whenever you squint your eyes, it makes the, um, the light and dark, uh, and it turns things into like, uh, shadow shapes and light shapes. And it makes things a little bit clearer for me. But if I see it from a distance and it's working, then, um, you know, instead of having to get up and go across the room, 
then I know that I'm going in the right direction. So his mouth is not quite what I want it to be. But that's okay. Again, because this is just a warm up. And I'm just having some fun with you guys talking because I've been doing a lot of reviews. And at the end of the day, somebody's going to somebody's gonna write me and say, dude, what happened to you drawing? You've been doing so many reviews. I cried out loud. You did a light review. Yes, I did. And it was glorious. Glorious. I love lights. I did a light review and I posted it. Um, I had gotten some holiday lights for free. Uh, all I had to do was the video. I mean, it's a quid pro quo. But at the end of the day, it's for free. And I just, I love stuff like that. I love whenever I can add something to my life that enriches, whether it's, you know, a pair of headphones <laughs> or something that just makes me smile. And that's exactly what those lights did. Every time I come up to my house or I go outside with my cup of coffee and it's like 25 degrees, I just, mm, it's so good. Let's just look at the lights and it makes me enjoy the holidays more because I'm a Christmas guy. Some of you are not Christmas people and that's perfectly fine. I'm not bugging on you. You don't have to be Christmas people. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start putting in some darker elements to kind of push and pull those forms, right? So we're going to have a little bit of shadow underneath this eye right here. It's going to come down. He's got some baggage because he didn't sleep the night before and then he got a little shadow under his nose and that cast down you know, a shadow under his lip here all the while thinking form right form height width and depth so if a light shines on this lip right here whoops if a light shines on this lip it's going to cast a shadow underneath right and since it is round it's rounded you're going to see shadows in different areas and highlights in different areas and that's just something that I'm constantly struggling with. I constantly struggle with form, you guys. I mean, I'm, I've been doing this a while and I'm still struggling with stuff, right? I think 3D has helped me um, with respect to understanding form a little bit better because, you know, working in a 3D environment, you're constantly sculpting and reaffirming that, uh, that thing in your brain. Form, 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 form. So now we're going to shadow a little bit under his cheek. Because again, I forget what that disease was called. I'm sure somebody's going to ping me in the video this morning. It's called this, you moron. Okay, this is like a young Abe Lincoln. He's like, don't mess with me, man. I will cut you. I will cut you so bad. Got these little doodads on his cheek. Okay, so he's got to... Now, you see me draw through. That's something that... Um, I think you should also practice called the draw through, right? Even though I don't see this ear on the other side, he does have some hair that comes out like right here. I can't see it, but it is right here. Now I'm going to draw it. No, but I could give a small indication in my brain, right? Of where stuff is. Even if I don't draw it, making that stroke really helps me reconfirm and affirm where stuff is. So then I come down here and you'll see me draw his neck through because I want to make sure neck right here, I've got the Adam's apple coming down. Okay. He's got that collar and comes up. Shoop. Comes around. He's got this. Victorian suit. Not really. Comes down. Okay. Now we're going to concentrate a little bit more on his eyes. Again, with that, uh, that whatever that ailment was. It's not Pick's disease. What is that called? Ugh. Just gaunt. He was very gaunt. You know, thin. And I know, because uh, I watch documentaries, I'm a documentary guy, and I watched a documentary on him and how his doctor was uh, prescribing, what was it called? Blue something. Blue. It was a blue pill, and I think it had mercury in it. So the blue pill, take the blue pill, Mr. Lincoln. It's only got, you know, 400 milligrams of mercury in it. Make you feel bad. It'll make you feel good. But those days, I mean, people were putting so much crap in their clothes. They were absorbing chemicals. I mean, it was 
cats and dogs were living together. Oh, God, it was mass hysteria. Um, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is, I mean, they prescribe pills. Um, blue, gosh, what is it called? Not blue lightning, blue runner, blue. Yeah. See, this is, it's in my brain. I always talk to my kids and I say, hold on, let me consult the Rolodex. Let me call it consult the, you know, my brain to see if I can find anything. Um, blue mass. Blue mass? I think it was called blue mass. Basically, he was getting mercury poison and it accumulated and it was terrible. So, oh, he was in constant pain. I mean, golly, it was just so bad, Mr. Lincoln. So now I'm going to do is I'm going to darken my brush slightly. Yeah, this is a young Mr. Lincoln. Fresh out of college. See, occasionally you'll see me do something like this, right? And what that helps me do is it helps me um, understand that is a form like this cheek. So I'll come back and I'll kind of draw a little, little, you know, motion lines in. And... Okay, so let's go ahead and darken this slightly. Okay. All right. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the holidays. Of course, here in the mountains, it is so cold. It was like tw like 17 degrees this morning and we're at elevation. So we're about 2,200 feet. So it gets cold here. I mean, I understand that it's cold in other places and you get snow and you get snowed in and all those things are relative and, and stuff. And, and we get, you know, we get some snow. It's not like ridiculous snow, but I mean, we've had, you know, 12, 15, 20, whatever inches. And I just, I'm, I'm not a fan of the cold, man. Like, why'd you move there? Well, there's opportunities here that, you know, we didn't have in Florida. And now we just, we just like living here. <laughs> you know, if we get a little bit of cold weather here and there, then we're fine. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going back and putting in some of the line work that kind of makes it pop a little bit. And I'm not like going and rendering it per se, but I am just making sure that some of those areas have light and shadow and variation, you know, my variation of line weight that I put in. Right. So let's go ahead. A little bit of a shadow here. His lip kind of tapers a little bit here. Yeah. Every, every picture that I see, he was, he's very stoic, right? Stoic stoicism. I just want to see it like smile. I think that's why it's so shocking. Whenever we see some whether it's advertisements or whatever on television and it shows Abe Lincoln with a big smile, you're like, whoa, that doesn't gel with me, bro. You know, Abe Lincoln doesn't smile. I'm sure he did. You know, Christmas time. You know, he was a man too. And then the documentary, oh my goodness gracious, the documentary was talking about all the things that happened to his body after he died. Oh my gosh. I was, I was flabbergasted. It was stolen. I mean, his hat was stolen. This and that. They recovered his body and ugh. years after it was buried. Why can't you just leave the man alone? He was a polarizing figure for sure. Yeah. That's what I'm doing now. And again, just putting stuff in. Getting my hand connected to my brain. Making sure that everything is working out. There we go. Now he looks a little bit like Abe Lincoln. <laughs> <sighs> Looks a little bit like Abe Lincoln. How dare you? Yeah. So that's basically today's video. I want to make sure you guys know that this is a drawing channel. And even though I do a lot of reviews, <laughs> and I'm not shirking the reviews, right? Because they're important. And I want to make sure and do them, especially if somebody 
is, you know, asking me to do a review. I've actually got an Amazon Influencers uh, account now. We're going to be uploading some of the videos and hopefully getting some sweet cheddar from it. <sighs> and I've already mapped out the outline for the video series that I'll be giving to you guys. Not giving to you guys. I'll be selling it for a small monetary cost, probably about $5 for the entire seven video series. I'm super excited about it. Got the outline done. I just got to sit down and Get the time to do it. <laughs> time, what is that? I don't know. What is that? What is time? Time's a foreign construct to me. I don't even know what that is. Yeah. Yeah, there's Mr. Lincoln. There he is. So now I'm going to take the taper off the brush. This isn't a Photoshop how to video, this is just a warm up. So I'm just going in. Putting in a little bit of generalized shadowing. Really quick. Right. To help again define that form a little bit better. Maybe position stuff in the background here. And yeah, we'll do it on the front side here. Okay. Yeah. A little bit of shadow there, a little bit of shadow here, so on and so forth. And then we come back with the white highlight. A little taper, and then a bit of a highlight there, and a bit of a highlight there. Maybe secondary eye shine here. Okay, and that, my friends, is a really quick warm up for this morning of Abraham Lincoln. Maybe in his teenage years, maybe he's just graduated from college. I don't know. <laughs> anyway. I could work on this for the next three hours, put, you know, skin stuff in there. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to show you how quickly you can uh, create something, right? Using those basic principles and elements of art, putting in the form, putting in the shadow, light and shadow, line weight, all of those things, movement to help, uh, you know, help you, uh, you know, work through those 10,000 bad drawings, right? I would classify this as probably, you know, right in the, learning process this is a learning drawing <laughs> so thank you guys hopefully you enjoyed this short video and uh you know click that notification bell i've noticed that uh you know i've got almost nineteen thousand subscribers and my typical video viewership lasts you know probably about 300 to 400 you know views and i saw that a lot of people that are subscribed just don't watch the video so hit that bell if you can i'd really appreciate it and if you're not a subscriber please consider subscribing we got a lot going on and uh, we'll see you next time. All right, guys? Thanks. Bye.